Hello and welcome to Thought Catalyst. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about nuclear decommissioning and lasers. As the nation's power stations reach the end of their working lives, the problem of their demolition has prompted engineers to look at implementing novel techniques in varied aspects of nuclear decommissioning. The method we're interested in today is the use of laser cutting. Now, the primary use of laser cutting equipment in nuclear environments involves the dismantling and general size reduction of contaminated metallic and concrete components. This is because many of the radioactive materials are stored underwater where the use of more traditional tools would be unfeasible. The main driver for wanting to reduce the size of these components is to free up expensive space in the many ponds on nuclear site licensed installations. Almost every year, the UK, the US and France re-estimate the costs to the taxpayer of decommissioning their nuclear facilities. The costs arrived at are so large and difficult to comprehend that it almost makes no sense to write them down as figures. What's clear though is that the bodies responsible for decommissioning now want to do it cheaper and faster whilst of course ensuring our safety. The development of laser cutting has revolutionized nuclear decommissioning. If you look back only a few years to 2010, scientists were looking into whether you could cut a stainless steel tube from just one side. Initially scientists were skeptical, but as it turned out, single-sided tube cutting is in fact a good example of what laser cutting can achieve. More recently, work is focused on cutting thick 40 to 100 mm carbon magnesium steel bar and plate material. Despite this taking longer to cut, Laser cutting still makes short work of the steel compared to traditional methods such as abrasive water jet cutting, diamond wire sawing and mechanical shearing. The idea was taken further with handheld laser cutting. The concept was largely dismissed as impossible for the last decade. However, recent developments by the Welding Institute have demonstrated that you can take a laser cutting head, add a pistol grip, provide suitable PPE and following an extensive risk assessment, do just that. At the end of this clip, one of the benefits of decommissioning in this way can be seen. That is its capability to achieve a high packing density of the resulting parts. This is important because volume equals cost when storing radioactive waste material. In the UK, there are a very large number of radioactive metal storage skips, which have been used over many, many years for storing and moving fuel elements for the Magnox reactors. The cost of storing low and intermediate level nuclear waste is related to the volume of the parts. The estimated cost to the UK taxpayer of storing one such skip for its lifetime is £500,000. And there are an estimated 3,000 of these skips in the UK, resulting in a £1.5 billion fee to the UK taxpayer. Laser cutting technology is well suited for nuclear decommission for a multitude of reasons not just because of their capability for remote deployment due to their lightness, but also because of their compact processing heads, allowing for easier dismantling. Furthermore, there is no reaction force between the head and the metallic structure, resulting in the limited generation of dust and fumes, both essential properties for such sensitive structures. The first application of laser cutting in the nuclear environment started in 2011, but to sufficiently demonstrate cutting on radioactive material has taken over three years. Now, three years to move from concept to active demonstration might seem long in our terms, but for the nuclear industry in the UK, this is light speed. The Welding Institute have successfully demonstrated that the application of these lasers for dismantling and size reduction of nuclear facilities can be conducted in a safe, remote and efficient manner and hopefully future developments will provide further applications for this emerging technology. We really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in another video, please leave us a message below or contact us on Twitter.